Welcome to today's lesson on perimeter and circumference. Uh, this is something we're going to be doing today. We're going to be using formulas. And one of the things that I'm going to try to stress today is that you're actually going to write the formula first before you actually start figuring out the problem. So I'm going to hide the numbers from you. Today's objective is to learn to find the perimeter of a polygon and the circumference of a circle. Uh, we're going to make it look a little bit more like an algebra class right here. By now, you should know the perimeter uh, is distance around that geometric figure. A lot of times I think of the old military movies where you're walking the perimeter on the outside if uh, I see how far that you actually be walking. The one that we're going to use for a triangle today is since it has three sides, is we're going to do perimeter. And we're going to have side one, side two, and side three. These are not multiplication. This is just saying this is the this is first side, this is the second side, and this is the third side. Uh, you could obviously use X, Y, and Z if you wanted to. But uh, we'll start with this one possibly. The next formula that I'm going to ask that you write down, and hopefully you already have this written down, is perimeter of a rectangle. There are a couple different forms that you might see, but this is one common form that I'm going to be using. It's going to be twice the length plus twice the width. And uh, yeah, I know you can find the answer if you add all the sides up, but we're going to be looking a little more uh, mature with this and more algebra because I'll be giving you the perimeter and you'll find the length and the width. And this will also help us later as we are working with spreadsheets. So you have these two formulas down. What we're also going to talk about is, is we're going to talk about circles today, and we're going to talk about circumference. The one that I will probably use the most will be is circumference is diameter times pi. So make sure you have that written down. And then you can also write that as is twice the radius uh, times pi. Hopefully you do know that uh, the radius goes from the center to a point on the circle. So that would be the radius all the way across would be the di diameter. You should be able to do some math in your head on these. So you've got these three formulas written down. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some examples with an actually triangle, rectangle, and circumference. And you probably already practiced some of these. So here we go. The first one, we're going to find a perimeter of a triangle. What I want you to get in the habit of writing is, is at least three lines. And working in a vertical manner is going to be the easiest way to check for any error and for somebody else thought. And I purposely hid the numbers for you. Why? Because the first thing I want you to write down is the formula. A uh, tendency a lot of students have is, is that they will actually start working out the problem and they're not thinking about their procedures. So you've written this down. Now that you've written this down, what we can do is we can find out what those missing sides were. I know all of a sudden you're thinking of an isosceles triangle. So what we're going to be doing is, is we're going to write these three numbers and get yourself a system maybe going clockwise or counterclockwise and we're going to write them down 25 25 and 15 so we're going to add all these together and you should already have an answer for this one and don't forget to label it the perimeter is 65 centimeters now i know that many of you as soon as i uncovered this you had the answer but here's the important thing somebody can look at this when they can see that there's three sides they can see the measurement of each side just in case they have to change it for any type of dimensions if this is a construction worker has to adjust anything. And then you got your answer and it's labeled and then that could help us with uh, ordering material and cost of material. Next, we're going to do a huge um, billboard. And right away you're seeing a rectangle. And so you're thinking, okay, what formula am I going to be using? Yep, this is the formula you should have. It's twice the length plus twice the width. You're not even looking at the numbers yet. That's a uh, common mistake that a lot of kids do, and they rush through the problems. Next, what I should probably do is I should probably have two, I have the parentheses because I'm about to find out what the numbers are, and the width in there. So you're giving your space to do this. You're not putting them right next to each other because sometimes, you know, if you're rushed or somebody else is looking at your work or you're looking at their work, you might get confused a little bit. So I will usually do the longer side to be the length. And this to be there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy them and I'm going to sneak them right in here. Oh, you should be able to double pretty easy in your head right now. So you're going to double 13 and 2 tenths and 8 and 4 tenths. That's what you should have. You should have 26 and 4 tenths and 16 and 8 tenths. Then all you got to do is add those two together. And so we're going to get 43 and 2 tenths. Now, the whole reason for this is because is we're going to be doing more complicated problems as you move on in your career. 
and this is going to just going to give you a tendency. When you're playing baseball, a lot of times the coach will tell you to be baseball ready. You're going to be anticipating any type of ball that's going to be coming thrown at you. So you're going to be all right with this one. If you write out the formulas, you're going to be prepared for anything that I or another teacher will throw at you. So let's try another one. This time, um, you don't necessarily have to copy the whole problem down here, but you're going to be finding something to deal with the perimeter right here. So 75 feet right here. I think that's going to be my perimeter. That's going to be how much I have to work to go around here. And then my 17 and a half feet is going to be one of the sides. Now, I don't know if it's the longer side or shorter side. I must find that out. First thing we should be thinking about is our formula. Should I already have this written down? Twice the length plus twice the width. After you've done that, here's where we're going to separate the average students from the, out, the ones that are going to be ready for algebra. Below the P, we're going to put the 75 here. It could be the length or it could be the width. I'm going to have this as not, not knowing the length, so I'm going to put the L here. And I'm going to put the 17 and a half right below the width. Then I'm going to try to simplify this just like an algebra problem right here. And I'm going to get 35. At this point, you should remember that you're going to be subtracting 35 from both sides on this side and this side. What you do to one side, you do the other. You're going to get 40. All right. Somehow I forgot to get rid of this guy. And you're going to get 40 is for the length. And is equal to twice the length, and your length is going to be 20 feet. If you think about this one, a lot of times, sometimes mental math is a little easier. 20 doubled is 40. 17 and a half doubled is 35, and if I would add them together, I would get 75. So this one's going to help us also if we start putting x in here, and x minus 2, etc., and just a matter of filling them in in a vertical manner. So we've covered the perimeter. Now we're going to be moving into circumference. Remember, diameter is all the way across, and radius starts from center. A lot of times I will say die pi. It's just that works for me. Um, I know I'm really upset if I'm not going to get any apple pie over Thanksgiving holiday, so um, I'm going to feel like I'm going to die. So die pi or twice the radius times pi, whatever seems to work for you. Okay. So we're going to find the circumference of a circle. Maybe it's going to be the measuring wheel that you're going to do. Maybe it's going to be one of the cans that you're going to be rolling in class or measuring. I haven't even given you a number. First thing you should be writing down is the formula that you're going to use. I will quite often use diameter times pi. I'm able to find a diameter real quick in my head on most of them, or sometimes i got to use a calculator. Next, I'm going to write this. I'm going to use pi is approximately 3.14. That's going to be good enough for us. Some of you might use the pi button. Your answer is going to be slightly larger than what I'm going to have on here, so I just want you to anticipate that. Okay, we're getting ready for whatever the diameter is. Now, as the picture shows, it's the dotted line all the way across, so that is the, got it, the diameter. So what I would like you to do is, wherever you see the D, I want you to put 22 feet there. Real easy process, don't confuse this with an area of a circle, is all you got to do is multiply get an answer already? Okay, this is the answer that I came out to. I always seem to round it to the nearest hundredth. And that's how we do it. Okay, next one's going to be very similar, but remember, you just didn't see what that radius was there. I had to cover that up. Um, you're going to think this. Okay, I'm doing the circumference of a circle again. First thing I should do, that's right, go ahead and write that down. Diameter times pi. But I was not given a diameter. Okay, so then this is what I got to start thinking to myself is, is I'm going to be doubling whatever number is hidden behind here. Now, it's not as exciting as a game show, but just imagine <laughs> the possibility here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that. And then on my calculator, or if I have to do it old, old school, is I'm going to be multiplying those. And that's the answer you should get. It's 56 and 52 hundredths. So if I give you the radius, need to double it and multiply it. That's a common mistake is if you're rushing real quick because sometimes people aren't getting an answer half as large as this one. If I give you the diameter, all you have to do is multiply it by pi. And sometimes you will see that sometimes the textbook uses 22 over 7. That's okay. That's going to be about the same answer too. This 
habit of doing this is going to help us on the next example is maybe you measure the circumference of something. Uh, maybe you're going out to California and uh, you get to see the redwood forest. Uh, that's something I would love to see. And you measure the circumference of something and you get it as large as this. So we want to find out the diameter is. is okay. Can I fit through there? Can a car fit through there? First thing you do, you see the word circumference. Write down the formula. Did you write it down? Yep. Diameter times pi. Now some kids are thinking, okay, do I just multiply? No, you've got to get into the habit of carrying things down. What is my circumference? What is my diameter? Oh, I don't know. What is pi? You're always going to know that it's going to be approximately 3.14. So your work is going to look like this. This is a little bit different. It's below your circumference. Your diameter is your unknown, your variable. And pi, you know, is approximately 3.14. Now, how in the world do I get an answer for this one? Well, these numbers are right next to each other. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a little bit of division. What are we dividing by? 3.14. And if I divide both sides by the 3.14, that cancels us out. And you're going to be left with just your diameter. What do you find your diameter to be? should start off with a 5. Yep, that's what you should have. Now, what is wrong with my answer? Going through this kind of quick, I just realized that I made a mistake. Yep, I did not label it with feet because you want to know definitely what it is. So 51 feet, I would say that my car could probably definitely fit through there if this was actually something that large. All right, hopefully you are getting in the habit of writing this out with the writing the formulas and plugging the numbers underneath there. Good luck with it, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know.